folks, Joseph A. Savora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week, and this is the review that I've been waiting for for a very long time, mostly because this is one of my favorite movies um, of the 80s, along with all the other 80s films that I could think of and talk about, but I've been waiting for, for a long time to pick this up, ever since it got announced. Uh, in 2016 and I picked it up just recently at Amazon and I bought that along with the movie Pulse called Dreamscape that's right and long before films like The Cell, Inception, Total Recall, The Matrix, Prepica the 13th Floor, which is a very underrated film. And of course this movie came just a year after uh, Brainstorm. This was the movie that for years I've been trying to search for, but finally I had a chance. Uh, when I found the title and I looked for that movie online. Because I used to watch this film on HBO back when I was a little kid. Yeah, they used to play this constantly on HBO and Cinemax. I never forget the moment when uh, Dennis Quaid's character, Alex Garner, you know, who's a psychic, who actually um, had his first dream when he went inside the dream machine, because this was like a, uh, a government-funded project that they're working on. It was a secret project where he dreamt that um, he was inside invading uh, a nightmare of, of a construction worker who got knocked over by the crane and, and was ready to fall but he hangs onto the crane and then Alex jumps up into the crane and, and hangs on and tries to help um, the construction worker from falling but uh, his flannel shirt got torn up and then he fell off of the crane and went all the way down like four stories high from a, the tallest building of Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> I never forget that scene. And all this time I've been trying to search for that. And then, here we go. <laughs> and Dreamscape is definitely um, one of the greatest uh, movies ever made that, sad to say, was not a big hit at the box office uh, when it came out. Um, but it did actually make profit. It, it was released by 20th Century Fox at the time. And, believe it or not, this was their second rated film ever after Red Dawn. That's right. Because they both came out in August. Yeah, since... Uh, PG-13 was um, a new rating for the MPAA rating system, the yeah, Motion Picture Association of America, because of the controversy of films like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Ironically enough, Kate Capshaw is in the film, but she plays a different role. <laughs> and there are some similarities, too, because, um, yes, there is actually a scene where the heart's been taken out. <laughs> so this is the second movie where we actually see a heart being ripped off. Uh, and it's not just Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. <laughs> well, anyway. And th this is a brand new Blu-ray release from Shelf Factory, or at this rate, Screen Factory, because that's their label for Shelf Factory. Has tons of great features, including um, New interviews uh, with the people working with the film, you know, like like director Joseph Rubin, along with uh, co-writer uh, Chuck Russell, who later went on to do the remake of The Blob, as well as um, films like uh, The Mask and The Racer come to mind, even the The Scorpion King. That's right, Chuck Russell. And also got producer Bruce uh, Con Curtis, who happens to 
to work with uh, Stanley P. Zupnik with their production company that produced this film. You got everything, see, We're right at the back. <laughs> yeah. Plus, they also ported the, the commentary along with a few extras from the DVD and Blu ray release. Yeah, the first Blu ray release was from Image Entertainment, which, transfer wise, it wasn't. It was okay, but it's not as good as. Um, as a transfer we got here on this release or any of the previous ones that follow but this time we get a 2k uh, master in the positives for this release and I'm happy to see that the film looks even better than ever on blu-ray and I've been waiting for this for a long time because I never bought her picking up the first blu-ray release and I never bought the DVD release either sadly but that's okay I think it was the, it was worth the wait for like this long however I did record it on Flix back in 2011 so I had a chance um, and unfortunately there's no nudity in this movie yeah it's been uh, taken off at this point although maybe it had been featured on all the previous home video releases as I recall they also had this in some international releases at this rate uh, Germany so I guess they were lucky but I guess I had to find the VHS tape uh, just for that but I did kind of recall finding a copy of it um, on YouTube so maybe maybe I don't have to worry about it but if I thought about it this way I, I don't mind um, but I didn't buy this just for nudity. I just bought it because it's one of my favorite films. I really enjoyed it. I love Dennis Quaid in the film, along with uh, actors like Kate Capshaw, Christopher Plummer, and he's the villain in this movie. Also, uh, Max von Sydow, who's a great actor. And you also got George Wentz in the film, uh, Chris Mulcahy, and all the others. It's really cool. So I also have, so it also includes the reversible slip cover, as you can see, because <laughs> I just changed it. And there it is. <laughs> so let's get to the review. It stars Dennis Quaid. Kate Capshaw, Max von Sydow, Christopher Plummer, David Patrick Kelly from the movie The Warriors, as well as Commando, and The Crow, he's a great actor, George Wendt, Eddie Albert from Green Acres, that's right, who plays uh, Oliver, but this is a much different role in this movie. He plays the President of the United States. Yeah. Chris Moke, Larry Gilman, Corey Yodders, Eric Gold, Peter Jason, and Jenna Taylor. It's written by David Lagarde, along with Chuck Russell and Joseph Rubin, and it's directed by Joseph Rubin. The movie begins when we meet a psychic named Alice Gardner, who's played by Dennis Quaid, who at 19 years old was responsible for a prime subject of a scientific research project by using his psychic abilities. But unfortunately he disappeared years as it went along. He's been using his abilities for gambling at the racetrack as well as womanizing, which apparently he had his uh, girlfriend that he just left him. Such a shame. Only it gets worse because he gets involved with a local gangster named Sned, who's played by Redmond Gleason, who's actually being uh, chased down by two of his thugs all the way around the racetrack, and it only gets worse from there. 
But that is until he's being taken by two guys named Finch and Babcock, both played by Peter Jason and Chris Moke, who identify themselves from the academic institution. So once they took Alex inside the institution, he actually reunites with his former mentor named Dr. Paul Novarty, who's played by Max von Sydow, who's actually involved in a secret government-funded psychic research, which is the dreamscape that they're working on, where he actually works uh, with his assistant, Dr. Jane DeVice, who's played by Kay Capshaw. So, they begin to use this project mostly to help uh, diagnose and treat sleep disorders from everyone, including nightmares. So that way, if people can go inside their dreams, they'll be able to fix all the problems and help others. But unfortunately, this secret project is being hijacked by the most powerful government agent in the entire country, named Bob Blair, who's played by Christopher Plummer. And he's the villain in this movie, who's also friends with the President of the United States, who's been having some very strange and progressively worse nightmares uh, about the, the nuclear holocaust which would start World War III and it's played by Eddie Albert. Now, nobody actually convinced Alex to join the program by doing a test and that's where he begins to uh, did his first assignment by actually going inside the dream, as I just mentioned it earlier in the video, the construction worker who got knocked down by the crane and was holding on to while Alex came to the rescue to save him. But it was too late because by the time he tries to uh, hold on to his arm, um, his flannel shirt suddenly rips off and then he fell all the way while he was on top of the crane, fell off and went up all the way down from the tallest building of Los Angeles. So he woke up and <laughs> he was really surprised that he was alive because he felt that it was so real that it worked. So then he was hoping that he'll do the same for all the other guys out there and everyone involved. So his next assignment was to go after um, about a man who uh, was worried about his wife's uh, infidelity was at this rate his wife is actually cheating on either his brother or everyone else and that's what happened too when Alex was with uh, with the man inside the car went inside his house he began to find out that his wife is about to have sex uh, with someone which turned out to be his brother <laughs> unfortunately yeah uh, the, the way I saw the Blu-ray, though, um, you can see a little bit of uh, brief nudity on, on that shot where you can see um, her topless. But I guess if you had to find a VHS copy or all, all the other editions everywhere, you'd be able to see it fully. But that's certainly the case when I saw it. Cause they just zoom it in somehow. Or maybe that's just the way it was when it came out in theaters originally. Well, anyway, but it was a funny moment, too. I mean, he begins to to look underneath the bed. There's, like, everyone hiding in. And then there's other guys uh, outside, too. <laughs> so so I guess that means that, he's, that his wife's been cheating on everyone. <laughs> so, that, so that was hilarious. But then his third assignment would act, was actually decided to treat a young boy named Buddy, who's played by Corey Yodders, mostly because he had a nightmare about the Snake Man. That's right, the Snake Man, which has a cobra head and long, thick body right there. You gotta love how they, they created the Snake Man, um, especially if you watch uh, all the interviews and, and the video, all these other special features how they created it. In fact, yeah, um, animator uh, Craig Reardon 
along with several others, had worked on the project and it took a lot of work to do so. You know, they had a mix of stop motion and the transitions too and the movements and and the puppetry, the, the special makeup that they had to do. I mean, they had made tons of them too to make the Snake Man. Well, anyway, the Snake Man was about to go after a Buddy inside his house, which apparently his house is, is looking very strange and weird, like something that, that Tim Burton would have loved to do in his movies, including Beetlejuice. <laughs> I think that's probably where he got it from or something. I, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Tim Burton did see this movie, but that would have been cool, because he also has his talents. Anyway, they went down to those uh, zigzag um, staircases, so this is really interesting, just to escape the Snake Man until suddenly he appears, about to go after Alex and Buddy. So then Alex decided to go after the Snake Man, trying to you know, grab him and and actually have uh, Buddy take the axe and, and chop off his head. And there we go. So now they finally defeated the Snake Man. But that's where things started to get much worse when when Bob Blair decided to hire Tommy Ray because we begin to learn that he's a psychopath he actually killed his own father and he also wants up in the project actually uh, going after an old woman in in the dreamscape as he gave her a heart attack because now we begin to find out that yes, he is the killer. And their plan was to actually assassinate the President of the United States by going inside his dream. Because even though Bob Blair is friends with him, he wants to take over the world. So now he becomes as powerful as ever. But it's only Alex himself to, to save him before it's too late. It's a fascinating thriller. It also has a mix of other genres, like not only as a sci-fi action adventure, it also has horror, comedy, and romance all put together. Considering that it was under a small budget of five or six million dollars, and it worked, it really did. As he earned its um, its profit, it. And the audience really did enjoy the film. I mean, got good reviews when it came out. Although Gene Sisko basically gave it a mixed review. Negative, mostly. Yeah, because he had some problems with it. Also has a wonderful score. Although, even though it's mostly synthesizers. But originally they were going to get an orchestra score before they went into it. Um, that was actually done by Maurice Jarre. And I thought he was very good when he actually conducted those scores that they went for. I know they had, they had to put the money up for it. And I love the cast. And, and I love uh, the chemistry between uh, Dennis Quaid and Kate Capshaw as Alex and, and Jane. Especially that scene where, where suddenly Alex uh, invaded uh, Jane's a dream where she was at a train station and suddenly wants of making love with Alex or at this rate Alex was making love with her and I know there was a sex scene in the film where basically we, we do get to see um, Capshaw's boobs but unfortunately that's in the uncut version as I mentioned so it's not on the, the blu-ray release that it got that's a shame so again, if you have to get the uncut version, I mean, chances are it's not going to be easy. <laughs> Unless you have to get it in Germany. But I heard that they used some standard uh, prints uh, inserted into it. Better than nothing, I guess. Um, but it's very fascinating, too. And of course, um, David Patrick Kelly uh, was very uh, frightening, but yet... Very cool as the villain, uh, Tommy Ray. 
Um, I love the moment then that after uh, Alex went inside uh, the President of the United States' uh, dream, where they actually went inside the, the trolley, as we see Washington, D.C. already in shambles, too. <laughs> Even the President also had dreams uh, earlier in the film where he dreamed that his wife has been killed during a blast in New York City. Yeah, the bell being the nuclear holocaust. And even so, there's even scenes with the mutant kids being hidden. So he felt pretty bad about this. And that's what he was afraid of, too, that this would definitely get much worse than that. So, Alex was to begin to save um, the president while he was in the trolley. He's begin to tell him that that he was in danger and he didn't do all this. Someone else is doing it. So Tommy Ray came came by, actually ripped the heart of of a local cop, and actually <laughs> threw the heart at uh, Alex, saying, "Have a heart." Just right after he said, "You sick bastard." <laughs> yeah. And there's even a moment when we begin. Once uh, the trolley turns into um, the subway, you know, after they went inside the tunnel, you get to see all the zombies of all the people, and then you see uh, Tommy Ray telling them that they did all this, and then of course uh, he also transforms into uh, a ninja fighter, mostly because he watches uh, too many uh, Bruce Lee films. He's been using all these uh, nunchucks swinging around it, but th those nunchucks that he was using had a lot of uh, green lights. It, it just looks amazing. And then of course, uh, spoiler alert, he was the snake man. That's right. He transforms himself to the snake man and and then that's where we, we see a lot of those uh, very uh, scary uh, dogs with all these uh, glowing red eyes, he was about to go after Alex and the president. Yeah, one of the dogs got electrocuted, and then um, as the snake man appears, just right when they went inside to see the caves, um, grabs the lights. Um, snake man appears, and the president was ready to stab the snake man just when he was rolling all the way and then, yeah and Alex dreamt that he was his father and there we go they defeated him and they definitely defeated uh, Tommy Ray <laughs> and I also love the ending too where um, <laughs> where Alex um, becomes a snake man and, and goes after Bob Blair <laughs> it was awesome just an awesome scene right there. Oh boy. I just really love this film and I'm just so happy I picked up the Blu-ray. It was definitely worth it for that price alone. Um, once again I love the cast. Uh, I love Dennis Quaid in the film. Definitely his best performance as Alex. Uh, Kate Capshaw was very good, very attractive in this film. Very sexy too, yeah, as Jane. Great chemistry altogether. Uh, love Eddie Albert as the president. He's very good. I mean, you definitely feel sorry for him after dealing with all these nightmares that he's been getting. Um, Buddy was very good too, uh, played by Corey Yotters. Yeah, he was. Um, it's, it's really cool that we got a kid who's not. Um, irritating or annoying or everything. I mean, he's just like a normal kid like everybody else, you know. He just, he's just afraid um, about the Snake Man. He, he did all these drawings, too, of what the Snake Man looks like. And even Alex started to draw, too. Except Alex is more realistic compared to uh, his drawings. Hey, he's a kid. Max Ponsido was also very good. Actually, very excellent as... Uh, Paul Novity. 
along with um, Christopher Plummer as a powerful Bob Blair. And he's very good too. Yeah, definitely good for the talents alone. Also, um, George Wendt was very good in a small role as the um, the horror novelist. He's also friends with Alex, uh, which he's only there for a while, um, mostly at the bar scenes because kind of resembles to uh, Cheers uh, a little bit. Like, yeah, like for those who have watched the movie, they probably end up yelling, Norm! <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was good to see him too for a while. Just sad about what happened to him you know, during the middle of the film. And of course, as I mentioned, David Patrick Kelly. has a bit of like some references to uh, his uh, warrior role that he has <laughs> so it's very similar uh, especially when he takes out those uh, sharp claws and once again rip off the local cop with with the heart inside and threw it on Alex <sighs> yeah I, I, I could just go on and on talking about this movie and Joseph Rubin, to me, this is his best work that he ever did, because later on he went on to do The Stepfather, the original Stepfather, and even before this he did other films like The Pom Pom Girls and Joyride, yeah, which he actually worked with uh, David Lagarde, and have worked together with several films over the years, or any other. Yeah, he did a very good job directing this, as well as um, writing the screenplay along with Dayward Lagarde and, and Chuck Russell. So they did a great job putting all of them together. It really shows how good talents right there can actually write a very good story. And it shows. Yeah, Great cinematography too by uh, Brian Tafano. Also edited by two editors, uh, Lorenzo Di Stefano and Richard Helsley. And they also got the special effects team um, with uh, Craig Reardon, who's been working on other stuff, like mostly uh, for I, mostly for um, for movies like Star Wars and even Indiana Jones and all the rest of the films too, even Poltergeist. It's hard to believe that this is the same man who created all these special effects. Um, and all the makeup and, and the clay animation, all the practical effects that they use to make this movie. So it proves that you don't need CGI to make these uh, projects. So yes, you can use a lot of miniatures and, and create all, all of that to make it look real in a way. Even though... <laughs> They all keep saying that, yep, it's a dream, it's supposed to look like that. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're not getting it wrong. But then sometimes they feel like, yeah, they want to redo them again in the future to fix some of the problems. But no, I think it's just the, it should be exactly the way it is. And that's exactly what they should be doing. I mean, hell, if they had to do this movie today, chances are it's just going to be CGI. I mean, some of the theme will be the same, granted, but they'll definitely focus on more political agenda. I mean, it had political agenda in the movie, but but luckily it's kept small, so it's not preachy. Because usually when you see movies like this, they always have to preach it so much. We don't want that. So. And it has some beautiful shots. Um, by the dream tunnels and you know, when they try to invade inside someone else's dream. Um, I know it's, it looks uh, kind of strange the way they did it, but it was perfect. And I love that. Nowadays, you know, they're just going to use CGI technology to fix all that. Yeah, and it just won't be the same. But hey, you know, we had to get a lot of films that followed after Dreamscape, uh, like The Cell, Inception, because even Inception had a similar plot to this. 
but it doesn't have all the horror elements, it doesn't have the comedy elements, it doesn't even have uh, the romance and all that other stuff that they're supposed to have. Well, almost, but not quite. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, check this movie out. Pick up the copy from Shout Factory, Screen Factory, as I could say. <laughs> um, you'll never be disappointed, especially when you get tons of great features. Um, you get a great interview by Dennis Quaid, and as well as the, the writers, uh, the producer, the, the creators behind the film. Yeah, everything. You get, you get all the great extras right here. And also, if you want to find an uncut version of the same film, uh, try to track down either an old VHS tape, or if, if you can find it somewhere, or maybe try to see if you can find a German release that had the uncut version included, if, if it's available. So that's my recommendation if you want to see the uncut version. But either way, I'm happy I got this, and I'm happy I got to see the film for the first time in years. It looks beautiful and wonderful on Blu-ray with the 2K Interpositive Master. It just works. And I love it. It has all the witch colors. It definitely looks very natural the way the film's supposed to look. It has all the grain intact, everything. And the frightening looks are there. It's just amazing. Highly recommend this movie. So anyway, I give it five stars for Dreamscape. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.